Good morning, everybody, uneducated economist here. So, for those of you who don't know, I work at a lumber yard, and I get a lot of people who email me and ask me how it is to get the best deal at a lumber yard. And, you know, I've thought about this one quite a bit, and I've talked with some of the other guys. Ooh, sorry, let me put the dice up there. I know how much you guys love the dice. So, I thought I would do this video talking about how to get the best best deal. And like I said, I was talking with some of the other guys here about what it is that they offer to the customer that they feel is like the best deal or how it is that the customer can get the best deal from them as, as a salesman. And after talking with pretty much everybody and after having worked this business for 20 years, like pretty much my entire life, I got a job working at a lumberyard when I was 18, a senior in high school. I've been doing this my whole life. And so when I when I talked to these other salesmen and I was thinking about like what it is that the customer can do to get the best deal at a lumber yard, it dawned on me that the best thing that a customer could do to get the best deal at a lumber yard is to go down to the lumber yard before you go to do your project and learn everybody's name. Learn everybody's name. And you don't have to be like a creep about it or anything down there. Just go down there and buy like some light bulbs or something for the house. And whoever the salesperson there is, whoever's working the retail counter at the time, learn their name. Remember their name. And if you happen to strike up a conversation, remember something in the conversation. If they talk about like, we talk a lot about hunting around here, um, especially during hunting season. So it's real easy to get a conversation, you know, sparked up about hunting or fishing or just even about anything, you know, about like, I don't know, maybe like some of the projects that might be going on, like, you know, just ask the, ask the, you know, who's ever working the retail counter. It was just like, have you been selling a lot of deck packages lately? Just, just odd question, you know, something like that. I mean, they might, you know, take, it's not like odd to them because they may be like, yeah, we are selling a lot of deck packages right now. And then you could answer right back with, well, what's the most popular decking, you know, easy, like, you know, conversation to start. Once you figure out something about that person, then you can go back to that lumber yard, ask for that person, and then ask them for like certain particular things about that you know you need. Like say you're looking to order windows or doors or something like that. You can go to that person and say, hey, who's the best one here at your store who handles doors or windows or moldings or you know lumber framing packages? Whatever it is that you're looking for, ask that person. It might be them. They might be, yeah, I handle windows, you know? Perfect, let's talk. But the number one thing is, is that learning their name, because when you go in and you act personable, right? You don't need, I mean, and I say act, but it's not like you have to put on like a show or anything like that. You just don't be arrogant or uptight or, you know, you're a salesperson on the other end. You are, if you're looking for the best deal, you are, you are a salesperson yourself. And you are trying to sell yourself to this other individual. And you are trying to get the best deal and you're trying to get the best service out of them. And you can't do that by being a jerk. Won't happen. And you're certainly not going to get the best deal by going up and saying, hey, are you going to beat so-and-so's prices? Without even asking what the price is yet. Are you going to beat them? Are you going to match? Are you going to, you know... These type of things, immediately the salesperson on the other end starts putting up the defenses and say like, okay, well, if I'm going to have to go through a bunch of work to try and do this sale for you, then it's going to start costing you money. See, for example, I had, I had a customer. Let me give you a couple of examples here of what happened and what you shouldn't do. I had a customer who was looking for some specialty decking. right? Um, it, was, it was a particular hardwood decking. It's very hard to order the stuff in particular lengths. Like you, it's hard to say, I want 20, you know, 12 footers. It's easy to order the decking, but you have to order it in a random length. You have to say, I want, you know, 240 lineal feet and whatever shows up, shows up. But I had a customer who, before they ordered, they came to, you know, to the store and they asked, they said, how much is this particular deck? And they asked one of the salesmen. They gave him a quote. Later, they called the store, got a different salesman, asked him for the same thing, right? Got the quote. It's the same quote. Like, you know, it was just like, you know, I'm, the person, I remember the salesperson was on the phone and they put it down. I was like, didn't you just quote some e -pay? And they're like, yeah, how much you quote? Yeah, that's the retail. Bam, that's the retail. Same price. 
right? He just leaned, leaned over and got the same price that he was just quoted just, you know, a few hours earlier. The next morning, comes back in. I'm there. Nobody else is at the counter. It's just me. I'm talking to him. He asked me about ePay, and I'm remembering this conversation from the day before. So I'm like, yeah, I'll get you a price on it. Get his phone name and phone number. He leaves. I give him a, I give him the quote, the same price. Later that afternoon, he's back in. He's talking something totally different. Talking about like, I forget. It was some something totally different. Didn't have anything to do with this decking. But I think he was talking like windows or something. He was talking, trying to order a door or a window or something. And then he asked about this decking. It was a patio slider. That's what it was for the deck. And so he's trying to order this patio slider. He gets the patio slider ordered. Asked that salesman, who was somebody totally different, who he didn't involved in any of the decking, how much for this particular decking. He calls up, gets a price. Because he's got this patio slider sale, you know, getting this decking, he gives him a little bit better price. He's like, bam, okay, I'll take it. Right? Not realizing that all this work that he put in to trying to get this sales, to, to, get, to, to drop the sale, really annoyed the rest of the salesmen. Like, we all figured it out and saw what he had done, right? And we went to him and was like, man, we all quoted him this price. He's like, oh, man, well, I had the patio. And I was thinking, it was like, no, it's not a big deal that you drop the price down on the deck. It's just that he's gone to everybody trying to get this price. And it's really annoying. Right? So now he's got the quote on the deck. Now he needs particular lengths. And he's insistent on getting these lengths. And we told him, it's like, man, and all the salesmen now are clued in, right? And they're like, we can't do it. We can't do it. We can't do it. We can't do it. He asks, please. Okay. Hey, guys. All right. I'm on the phone with the vendor. I'm like, I got a customer. He doesn't need a lot. It's just like 10 pieces, but they need to all be this length. You'll do it? Wow. Okay, cool. Thanks. That's unheard of. You guys don't do that. And they're like, yeah, well, we got, okay, cool. Uh, hey bro, they said they would do it. I never heard anybody say that they would do this, but uh, I mean, as far as this particular decking, but they said that they would. I'm surprised, very surprised. A couple days later, the decking comes in. You know, he says, great, order it. Right. So, a couple of days later, the decking comes in and sure enough, it's not particular lengths. It's the lengths that he asked for. And then there's a few pieces in there that are longer than that, which is not surprising. Like, the guy wanted exactly this many lengths, but they aren't going to give you exactly that many lengths because they never give you that many lengths. You can't call out lengths. It's only lineal footage. So it wasn't surprising to me when I saw a handful of pieces came in that were a little bit longer. That's not my fault. I told him that was the way it was going to be and that, you know, he's going to have to pay for that extra footage on it. Insisted that was not right, that it was that company who was held liable for it. They should have to eat it, and that there is no way that the customer should have to pay for all this. And you know what? I slid him back over his money for the extra footage because I had charged it for him when we delivered it out to him. I slid him back his extra money, and I said, You know what? I'm sorry, but I do not want to handle any more of your sales. And he looked at me like, Are you serious? And I was like, Yes, I am. You know, the amount of effort that you put in to trying to get this deal done only for it to cost us money in the end is not worth it any longer. So I'm sorry. I just don't want to handle any more of your sales. Yeah, maybe some of the other guys will. I've never done that before. I have never, ever, ever done that before. And I probably will never do it again. But I was so annoyed by that sale. That guy will never get a good deal. He will never get a good deal. He tried so hard to get the good deal and look what happened. He ruined his relationship. I will search out any product for anybody. I don't care how big or small it is. You know, that's the type of thing that you have to pay attention to when you're going into doing a lumber sale with, at the lumber yard. These guys are your friends. They're trying to do business with you. They want you to succeed. If you are doing this for business, the lumber yard wants to see you be profitable and succeed. They want to sell you a lot of lumber. They don't want to hurt you. And a lumber yard that has you in mind is going to get your deliveries on time. They're going to search out those products for you. They're going to give you good pricing on it. They care about you. But if you're a jerk to them, why should they care? It's not just about the sales. It is about the money. I mean, at the bottom line, it's always about the money. Okay. But it's also about building a good relationship. You know, I have other stories that I could tell you. I would love to continue on, but I have to go into work right now. 
But I just wanted to put that out there for you guys. If you want a good deal at the lumberyard, go down to the lumberyard and learn everybody's name. Learn everybody's name. Learn something about them. Learn, learn what the dog's name is. You know, if we have a cat here, right? The cat is mean as hell, scratches the hell out of everybody. But the customers love that cat. You know, they come in, they talk about the cat and stuff like that. It gives them a personal feeling of being attached to the store. And it gives us, a, a, you know, an attachment to the customer. You know, that's what you, that's what you're looking for. If you can get that, you are going to get a good deal at the Lumberyard. You may not get the best price. You're probably going to get the best service, though, right? Pricing, you have to shop around. I mean, you just have to shop around. And don't shop around and beat the beat them up because you might get a good deal once, but that's it. Your, your good deal days are over, and now you're fighting for everything. So it's very important. Build that relationship up with your Lumberyard. Learn everybody's name. That's the best way to get a good deal. All right. Uneducated economist, a little bit of... Uh, out of the norm there for you guys, but I think you might enjoy it. All right. Uneducated economists, you let me know.